Bubble Energy. Come on, what's up, guys? Yeah. Hey, so my name is Chris. If I uh, haven't got the chance to meet you, um, I think since it's kind of a light night, I think I know most of you guys. Um, but if you're not, if you're new, um, welcome, and I'm glad you're here. Uh, inside your outline there, you have a connection card, and we just ask that you'll fill out as much information on that as you feel comfortable with. We're probably not going to creep over at your house or something and surprise you. Listen, I, I've learned one thing, and that's never make promises in church that you can't keep. So I can't promise you won't show up. So, um, like you see up there on the screen, tonight's title is Mirror and Mirror. And uh, it was cool, we even got to watch a neat video, had Michael Jackson singing a little bit there, which is awkward in church, but it works. But that's what we're talking about. Tonight we're going to be looking at the person in the mirror, and how can you talk about having a mirror if you don't bring one on stage? So, ta-da, there's the mirror. So, here's the thing. Um, mirrors kind of show us what's here right now, but tonight we're, I don't want us to talk about like a physical mirror. I want us to think more of like our reflection, who we see when we look in the mirror. And again, not necessarily a real mirror, but who we see when we look inside. Who Do we think that we're who we used to be? Uh, if you're a Christian, you might think that you're who you are because God says so, which is what we're talking about tonight. So you're on the right road. And some, sometimes you might look in the mirror and not know what to see, in which case, talk to your parents. So um, here's the thing. Mirrors show us now, but we all like new, right? Everybody likes new stuff. You get a new upgrade on your phone. Your parents buy you a new car, right? Um, we all like new. You get a new phone, new TV, new furniture in your bedroom. Um, in some cases, you guys have been in school for about a month now, so maybe you're hoping you get a new teacher. But there's all these new things that we, we really like new, you know, and it's, it reminds me of back when I was a little kid. I'd run downstairs on Christmas morning. Well, there weren't stairs. I have them now. But I would run across the house on Christmas morning, and, uh, you know, it would be like, it would be like midnight 30, if that's, if that's the, what you call it. And, uh... My parents would still be asleep. They wake up. I shredded every Christmas present, you know. But it was awesome because it was new and exciting, and I paid dearly for it when I did stuff like that. But it was new and awesome, and we all love new. And that's kind of one of the cool things about being a Christian is is, and we're going to talk about it. The Bible says that when you become a Christian, you're made new. So maybe what you should focus on about you is what God says about you, and not what other people say about you. A lot of us have that problem. We worry what other people think about us, right? Yeah, I'm sure none of you guys have ever had that problem. Um, but here's the thing. No matter what's in our future, we still have a past. We've all done something that we wish we could go back and not do. Okay, we've all had that, that one moment before we became Christians. So unless you were born at the altar, you have had sin in your life at some point. Probably even if you were, because let's be honest, church people, sometimes church people are mean. Right? Some get, sometimes, sometimes church people are mean, and it's okay. It's like Jeff Foxworthy. Um, this might be a dated reference, I don't know. But Jeff Foxworthy says he can make fun of rednecks because he is one. So I can make fun of church people because I is one. And that's okay. So uh, on, the first thing on your outline tonight I want you guys to look at is, is this. And it's not, not typical that we do this, but for tonight's point, um, it actually comes straight from Scripture, and it's this. And go ahead and get used to it. You're going to hear it a lot tonight. The point of tonight's message is, if anyone is in Christ, okay, say that with me. Say anyone. If anyone. anyone. So we're going to read it again. And where, when I say anyone, you just go ahead and say your name. It's going to sound really weird. Everybody's going to say their own name. So if Chris is in Christ, meaning in as in he's a, I'm a Christian, I follow Jesus, they are new creations. The old is gone, and the new has come. That's cool, right? We don't have to be who we used to be. We don't have to be the person that, that used to do things that, that got us in trouble and constantly had our parents mad at us. Um, but, but sometimes what happens is we get stuck in this spiritual rut to where we're kind of playing this game in our mind, and it's like we're, we're competing against ourselves. And we're thinking about, you know, well, I did that. Okay, so now i got to do this to counteract that. Well, that's, that's kind of like karma, and that's not really what we do. What we do is we go ahead and accept 
that if we are in Christ, we are a new creation, the old is gone, and the new has come. You start clean from day one. So it's this, it's this concept that's so difficult for us to get. It's this thing called grace. And we talk about it a lot, but it's so hard. It's easy to tell other people about Jesus' grace, but it's sometimes so difficult to accept it for ourselves. We don't want to accept God's grace because sometimes maybe we just don't feel that we deserve it. Now tonight, we're going to focus on three ways that we face the mirror. There's three ways that we face the mirror. Well, let's just go ahead and make a mess of things. So, tonight, the first thing, and I want you guys to go ahead and do this, but the first thing is face up. You try to face up your problem. Now, what I mean by face up? Face up as in, let's say you're addicted to something. Then you just go ahead and tell people that you're an addict, you know, and instead of being who Jesus says you are, you go ahead and focus on what you used to be when you were addicted to something. And you're like, hi, um, my name doesn't matter because all I am is an addict. It's like people who haven't had a drop of beer or liquor in 20 years still seeing themselves as an alcoholic. When they move past it that long, they're Christians and they're like, yeah, but you know what, I'm an addict. No, no, you're a Christian. You're made new. You're a new creation because everyone is if they are in Christ, which is what our point said. So we're going to look at some things tonight. We're going to look at a few things that um, may be in our past, may be part of our self-image. And I haven't written on this mirror yet, so I'm hoping that this marker's going to work. The first thing on the right. Okay, that's kind of working. First thing on the right. Let's go ahead and get the big word out of the way. Maybe we have some kind of sexual sin in our lives. Maybe, maybe don't. I'm not saying everybody in here does. But maybe, that, maybe there's one person in here that desperately needs to know this tonight, and that's who I'm talking to when I write that there. Maybe there's some kind of physical sin, and it doesn't necessarily have to be going 30 miles past the line. Maybe you just kind of crossed over the border just a little bit. Maybe it's something that every time you think about yourself and every time you think, hey, you know what, I'm going to sign up for this or that in church. I want to go work with FCA, but what if everybody finds out? Maybe that's something that's holding you back. And that's actually the second thing that I'm going to write up here. The second thing that a lot of us struggle with, and if we're honest, all of us have struggled with at one point or another. Doubt. It's a big thing that a lot of us struggle with, is doubt. Now, what do I mean by doubt? Doubt is when you're so stuck on what everybody else thinks. Or maybe you're just you're so used to hearing that you're not good enough that you'll never believe that you are. And no matter what the Bible says that God says to you, you can't get past that old thing. You can't get past doubt. You, you're constantly doubting yourself. I'll never be, uh, I can never sing because my voice isn't as pretty as so-and-so. So what? Sing. God made you. Sing. Next thing. I'm running out of room already. Next thing. We said it a second ago. Maybe you're an addict. And you could be an addict of anything. Um, matter of fact, Matt's a Mountain Dew addict. I am Matt. Yeah. Um, up until last week, um, our youth director was a caffeine addict. And now he doesn't drink caffeine, so if he looks sleepy, I'm not right. Um, but you can be addicted to anything. And like I said, a lot of times we, we go back to what we used to be. And, and we, we stay on that. Here's another one. And this one is a big problem. Big, big problem with church people. Maybe you struggle with bitterness. Maybe at some point you think, even if it's an imagined slight, maybe you think that at some point somebody did something intentionally against you. Maybe you tried out for something, somebody else got it, and you didn't. Maybe um, you, you applied for, maybe if you have a job, maybe you applied for a promoted position and you didn't get it and somebody else did, and you, you take it personal. And, you know, bitter, being bitter is, is uh, it's, they, I've heard a lot of words used in this text, but being bitter is kind of like you know drinking poison, hoping the other person dies. 
It doesn't get you anywhere. It's kind of like withholding forgiveness. The only person that hurts is you. So maybe you're struggling with bitterness, and it can be real bitterness. It can, okay? I've, I've been there. But maybe it's something that is so simple for you to move past if you really embrace the truth that if you are in Christ, you're a new creation. The old is gone. The new is come. Okay? We're going to say that a lot more, so just go ahead and be comfortable. The last thing I want to write, maybe you're looking up here and you're saying, Chris, I've never had sex, I've never doubted myself, I'm not addicted to anything, and I've never been bitter. I would say you're walking a very thin line. Because if you can look up there and say you've never had a problem with any of those, you just might struggle with the biggest one of all. You might notice I left the top clear. This is actually the one that got Satan kicked out of heaven and brought sin to the world. Maybe you have a problem with pride. Oh, I've never done any of that. I've never, I'm the perfect child, perfect student, perfect, perfect church person. I got, I got a perfect family life. Nothing's wrong with me. <coughs> Maybe you got a problem with pride. Which pride, quite simply, is, is this. Um, it's being full of yourself. So some people, uh, I, I used to have a friend, um, and, and he would say, well, you know, I'm not conceited, I'm convinced. So if you've heard that expression somewhere, that's pride. Thinking that you're better than everybody for whatever reason. You know, there's nothing wrong with taking pride in something. But it's a whole other ballgame when pride becomes what rules you and decides every move you make. And pride's a big one. It was mine. So I know. I can speak from experience. Okay. So second thing. Um, this is the second way we look in the mirror. We try to clean up our mess. We try to clean up our mess. You know, I gotta tell you guys, um, in 10 days from now, um, my wife Jessica and I are gonna be celebrating our nine year anniversary, wedding anniversary. Hey, she, she deserves it, she deserves the hand. Man. Married to me for that long. Um, it's actually 10 and a half if you go by my calendar. Um, but, uh, nine if you count marriage. So um, now here's the cool thing in that in that ten and a half years that will be nine um, uh, Just a handful of days after that my son turns four Four years old Now keep in mind we've all been four okay? And we have all made a mess that our parents had to clean up for us Okay, some of you guys if we're honest some of you guys still do um, you know, your mom tells you, clean your room, clean your room, clean your room, clean your room. Finally, you come home from school after like six months, and your room's clean, and she's like, I got it, don't worry. Well, here's the thing. I had a choice between two stories that I could tell you guys tonight. One of them involved body training. We're not going to tell that story. You'll thank me after you see where this is going. The second one, um, the second story that I'm going to tell you guys about is this. Um, my son, he sometimes, sometimes he wants to help. He wants to help clean up his messes. He did not want to today, but th that's not the story. So the story is this. Uh, I told him one time, it's just me and him at home. We're watching one of his little cartoons or something. And, and he goes in his room and he plays, and then I can finally watch normal television. Uh, parents know what I'm talking about. And uh, so he goes in his room. He tells me he's going to go pick up his toys. So I go in there. About 20 minutes, he's quiet. So I'm like, oh. So I go in there, and I check on him. And it's worse than it was to begin with. But, but he is like compartmentalized everything. Okay, so he's got all these toys. All the toys go in the same toy box, okay? But he's got some of them over here in a pile. He's got some of them over here that look like they're like sword fighting. They're, all the toys are facing one another. And he tells me, you know, Daddy, look what I did. I cleaned my room for you. That's what he said. Here's the problem. Um, his room was three times as bad as it was before he started cleaning. So basically, you guys know what whitewashing is? Anybody? It's this old method that like when your fence at home gets dirty or it gets messed up or your house even or your barn, who has a barn? But, or your barn and instead of actually like pressure washing it, doing it properly and then priming it, putting a whole new coat of paint, we do what most people from Georgia do and we just take buckets of white paint and throw them off. Okay, so by the time we're finished, it looks great. 
But here's the problem. When we try to do that with our lives, this is what happens. We look at that old self-image after we've already realized that we can't stand up to these problems by ourselves. We, yeah. we throw a coat of paint on it. Like, you know what? I'm going to put my toys in this box. And it's taking longer. Look, Daddy. Look what I did. Look what I did, Daddy.
church till I was about 10 years old. My life was absolutely perfect at this time. My family had money and really no major problems at all. However, two years later, when I was in middle school, my life took a turn for its worst. My dad lost the best job he's ever had, my grades plummeted, and on top of all this, my parents fought all the time. My life was a total disaster. I had a horrible reputation at school, and I hung out with bad people. I wanted so bad to fit in, so I just gave my body away, and I remember at one point doing drugs just to look cool. This all brought problems to my life. My mom and I fought all the time, and I never really spoke with my dad because he was always working. I hated my life, and I hated God for making it happen. I never really wanted to go to church, so every time I got invited, I made up excuse after excuse not to go. While all this was happening, my cousin was looking for a new church, and she found SEC. She always invited me to go, but because I had no interest in God, I said no. However, one Sunday, my mom and I got into a huge argument, and I didn't even want to be around her, so I called my cousin, and I told her I wanted to go to 155. When I arrived, I sat, ne sat down next to my cousin and a boy named Gary. So the next week, I came back and so on from there just to see him. I told myself I was never really going to be a follower of Christ. I was just going to church to see Garrett. I put myself wrong over the next few weeks. I noticed myself enjoying the message and praying to God each night. Eventually, I got baptized, and from there, my life changed 100%. My parents started to come to church, and they all got baptized. I dropped a lot of my old friends and made me Christian ones. In the best of it all, I became a group leader. I can honestly say I am happy to have Christ in my life and I would never change that for anything. God has helped me through so much and blessed me with more than I can imagine. If it wasn't for him and everyone at SEC, I would not be who I am today. Thank you. like legit real testimonies that I've heard in a long time and, and that takes a lot and just in case and I know no, nobody up here is like this but just in case um, you're thinking I can't believe she said that I can't believe that she said that I can't either because it takes a lot of courage to step out of this and embrace the fact that the old is gone and to just out and out tell people that the old is gone as a matter of fact the third thing then we look in the mirror. Now, I've given you the first two, okay? The first two, if you want, take your pen and just write a tiny little line through them because those are the wrong ways to look in the mirror. This is the only right way that you really can, and that's to give up. To give up whatever, whatever it is, whatever those issues are, to give those up and give them to Christ. That's really all you can do. He's the father that's big enough to clean up the mess that you made. He, he, and, and the fact that he shows us this grace, it is, it's, it's so beautiful. The things in our past that were dragging you down, the things that you were chained to that were dragging you down, the stuff that was in the mirror when you looked at it, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Does that mean that you might not still be dealing with some consequences from it? No. Maybe you are. Maybe you're grounded for like the next 17 years. I don't know. But it's possible. It's possible. So maybe, you know, you, you can't do that. Well, here's the thing. I can watch the president on television, right? I can watch him on TV. I don't usually watch a lot of TV, but I can watch the, television, the, the president on television. But if I drive up to the White House and I go to that little the security booth and I tell them, hey, I need to see President Obama. I'm probably never going to be heard from again. You guys know how that stuff works. They, they'll have me in like one of those, no, it's this way, one of these jackets. And you, might, you know, look, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Only a relationship gives you access. Proximity doesn't do that. I can go to Washington and be just meters, just half a mile, however long the driveway is from the White House. But that proximity doesn't give me a relationship with him. You can know all about Jesus. You can know, and, and, and this is the, one of the downfalls of modern Christianity, to be honest, is we struggle with familiarity. Everybody's heard about Jesus. Who hasn't? You know, It's impossible to go out and tell somebody that's never heard about Jesus about Jesus unless you go to like 
a remote corner of the world. And some of you guys might end up doing that. And I applaud you for that. But the truth is, you have to have a relationship if you want access. Now, we saw Kaylee's testimony. And I want to kind of give you a verse that goes along with that. And that's this, Romans 5, 8. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, you've got to think Paul was writing that to the church in Rome, the Roman church, hence why it's called Romans. Paul's writing that to Romans, and he's telling them, we were still sinners when Jesus Christ got beaten, hung naked on a cross, murdered, thrown into a tomb. And if it stopped there, there'd be no point, but then he resurrected. God breathed more life into him. And he came back, and people saw him. They knew that it was real. That's why we follow him. And that's why we know that it is okay for us to give up because he's got power that we cannot even imagine. And because of that power, it's completely okay to trust him to clean up what we can. Cool? You get that? You follow? You guys are really quiet at the time. Basically, it's like this. The man in the mirror, or woman in the mirror, is messed up. Doesn't matter who we are. Filthy rags, remember? We can do awesome things, but compared to what God's capable of, it's just filthy rags. That doesn't mean he doesn't want us to do awesome things for him. That doesn't mean he doesn't give us power to do awesome things for him. So what do we do with this problem? What do we do with this problem? <sighs> well, quite simply, we got to deal with this problem. Because the mess is still there. And getting into God, what, what, what does that do? That makes a change. It makes it all better. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to embarrass her. Kaylee, can you come up for a second? Give her a hand. Give her a hand, guys. Now, you've already accomplished everything that we've talked about through God, through your church family and what you believe. And I want to tell you that that was too cool. That was awesome. So Kaylee knows that sometimes, you got to, in order to do a job, you got to carry the right tool. Right? So if you, you got something I can borrow. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Kevin. People just carry these around in their purses. <laughs> Here's the thing. And let's get serious. Let's, I know it's difficult because look at me. But let's get serious. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... I'm going to give you this verse real quick. And I'm going to give you the present tense of it. I'm fogging up. Um, I'm going to give you the present tense as if it's going on right. John 1, 12 says this, To all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gives the right to become children of God. Because anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. Okay? Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation because the old is gone. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and do that. The old is gone and the new has come. The old is gone. And what God does with everything that you have, that you're carrying, all those things that you're dragging behind you like anchors, and they got chains connected. As a matter of fact, it's really cool. Um, Caitlin's about to start playing, but one, the song we're going to close with talks about breaking chains. Everything that we had listed up there, to somebody, that's a chain that's dragging you down. But it doesn't have to be. Because if you're in Christ, you're new. And that's what's so beautiful about our faith. If you're in Christ, you're new. On your connection cards tonight, you guys have what we call next steps. The reason we call them next steps is because we follow Jesus as Christians. That's what we do. 
and I've said this before, and if I remember to, I'm going to say it every time I talk about next steps. It is impossible to follow Jesus if you're standing still. You can't follow anyone.